Good afternoon. Welcome to the second of our second ser series of webinars 2021. It is my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Guido Mazzolini, who will tell us about his considerable experience on how to apply the digital pathology to make possible assisting with frozen sections the surgeons operating in hospitals not provided of a histopathology service. The topic discussed by Dr. Mazzolini is how he managed to organize this service, overcoming different problems and assessing its performance by the time. His experience has now spanned more than 10 years, and I believe that many of us at the end of, this, of his talk will think about replicating this solution elsewhere. Dr. Guido Mazzolini is an experienced open-minded and innovative head of department. He is passionate about his job. He likes solving problems and he is one of the most appreciated experts thanks to his constant research. Before we start listening to the talk, I would like to ask all of you to contribute any questions that might pop up into your minds as soon as it appears during the presentation using the chat. Any question is very welcome and precious for us. And Dr. Mazzolini is more than happy to be given the opportunity to clarify concepts or to expand on what he will be presenting shortly. You can write your question either in English or in Italian. All questions and answers will be presented in both languages, English and Italian. Because this point is very important, I am now repeating in Italian this last sentences. Prima di iniziare ad ascoltare la presentazione vorrei pregarvi di contribuire con le vostre domande scrivendo nella chat qualsiasi domanda possa venirvi in mente durante la presentazione. Qualsiasi domanda è benvenuta ed è preziosa per noi perché dà la possibilità al dottor Mazzoleni di poter chiarire o approfondire ciò che ci illustrerà tra breve. Potete scrivere la vostra domanda in inglese, potete scriverla anche in italiano Tutte le domande e le risposte saranno presentate sia in inglese che in italiano. E adesso lascio la parola al dottor Mazzoleni. And now it is time for me to give the floor to Dr. Mazzoleni. Sorry. I've never taught my students anything. I just try to put them in the best conditions to learn. Albert Einstein Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to webinar of the Knowledge Path Agenda 2021, an initiative by Diapat Knowledge Academy. Diapat is a leading company offering a complete range of innovative instruments, reagents and consumables for anatomic pathology. Diapat is based in Italy near Milan, with a network all over the world. Diapat Knowledge Academy offers educational webinars dedicated to lab scientists, anatomic pathology professionals, anatomopathologists and students. As you know, Diapat is approved CEU's provider by NSH, National Society for Histotechnology, if you're interested in gaining CEUs by NSH, you're welcome. You're invited to follow the instructions under the website www.diapat.com slash webinars list. Before starting the webinar, just a few practical information. The webinar is about 30 minutes. Then we are going to have a question and answer session at the very end of the webinar. So you are kindly invited to have your questions at the very end, typing the questions in the chat for the final open discussion. Digital Pathology and Telemedicine Dr. Guido Mazzoleni, Head Physician, Anatomic Pathology, Hospital of Borzen. Hello, I'm Dr. Guido Mazzoleni. I'm the Head Physician of Anatomic Pathology at the Borzen Hospital. I have graduated and specialised at the University of Bologna. 
I have had various experiences in Germany and Canada, and for the past 30 years I have been an employee of the Borzen Hospital, and for about 12 years I have been the head of anatomic pathology and the director of the cancer registry. I will present our experiment that has become a reality, and that is the possibility of performing frozen sections by digitizing the images, and therefore without being physically in the place where the frozen sections carried out. The reason why we arrived at this need is linked to the fact that Alto Adige is a mountainous region located on the north of the Italian Republic. Once the Kingdom of Italy and once also the south suburbs of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. We are right on the border. It is a region with not difficult movements but which require some time. According to the oncological certification that we had renewed over the years, we had to provide an impromptu examination service in four of the seven hospitals in our province, those marked with an asterisk. Therefore, the hospitals of Merano, Bresanoni and Brunico, while the anatomic pathology is located in the central hospital of Borzen, in the more central area of South Tyrol. This is a map of South Tyrol that shows the Borzen Hospital and the distances of the hospital compared to the other second-level hospitals, Merano, Bresanoni, Brunico, which have distances of about 30 kilometers compared to Merano, around 50 kilometers, Bresanoni, and 85 kilometers to Brunico. Apart from Merano, the only one where it was possible to organize a transport service, the others were too far away so we had to go to the peripheral hospitals to carry out frozen section. How did we do it initially? We moved around carrying a microtome that froze the piece with a nitrogen canister. We doctors and technicians, along with the microscope, travelled by car to the various hospitals. Clearly the quality was very low and it was very expensive in terms of time. A subsequent solution which is the one then adopted by most hospitals in the world, was to create an analysis centre within each unit. So spaces were created inside surgical theatres. We bought some high quality cryostat, and therefore the quality was much improved. Initially, we always went with our technician. Then, since the lab scientists who work in the various hospitals are all trained in the school for lab scientists present in Borzen, we began to sensitize these technicians to learn during their course of study by specializing in frozen sections. Various experiments and publications have been made on pathology techniques, and the best known experiment was that of Norway, and therefore we tried to see what existed reproducible in Europe. And we found this first experiment done at the Charité in Berlin, another one in Leoben in Austria. Then there was still another with a non-microscope microscope, in the sense that it was a microscope but closed without the eyepieces, only with the objectives. However, they were all systems that made it possible to digitize images, to transmit them at a distance. In Austria, there is still a telepathology system from Dr. Obrist, and in Salzburg, they also continued in the experience of impromptu telepathology, while in Germany, I am not aware that there are any. The project started in 2003 with Bressanoni initially, and lasted about a couple of years. After that, given the results, it was extended to Brunico and Merano. As I said, the other hospitals in the province were not connected also precisely for certification reasons because only in these four could an oncological type surgery be performed. Therefore, with the need for frozen sections. In the first project, we had a motorized microscope, a system to transmit the macroscopic image and videos present in the peripheral site. And obviously, we had the video in the central office where we analysed the image. The technician on site turns on the system any day in which there is a telepathology to be done. 
The macroscopic sample is prepared and that could be viewed in the central by transmitting macroscopic images. This system was very effective. We saw the image on the screen. We could comment on it by putting arrows indicating where the sample was to be done. This is obviously breast cancer. It is only an experimental thing because, in reality, in the experience, the analysis of the macroscopic sample has been completely delegated to the surgeon, and only rarely there has been the need to interact with the surgeon to understand where he had to do the sampling. This was the quality of the image we saw in the videos. It's not a particularly optimal quality. You can see this black image that was an initial attempt. This system was quite weak. It gave us many difficulties. We had to restart it and therefore it was a bit frustrating. But when it worked, it worked very well. The first 100 cases we analysed had some technical errors. Here we put about 20. 20 were just technical errors that consisted in the collapse of the connection, which was then restored. Only in 2 out of 100 cases we were unable to do the freezer exam and in most cases the diagnoses were correct. There has rarely been a need to differ the diagnosis to the definitive one. There have never been cases of false positives and the numbers of false negatives referred mainly to sentinel lymph nodes that were not accurately examined to avoid losing material. The presence of a micrometastasis could occur subsequently, even sometimes of macrometastasis up to 3 to 4 millimetres. But this was already predicted to happen. It also happened in the anatomic pathology. Problems. First, finding the spaces in the peripheral hospitals. Obviously, the training of laboratory scientists, the training of surgeons to convince them that they had to be the ones to do the practical part that the pathologist usually does. That is in the preparation of the sample. The training of pathologists to use digital images. You have to think that this happened about 20 years ago and then digitization was in its infancy. Now, it is such a reality recognized by all that no one would ever ask himself the problem of making a diagnosis on digital images. At that time, the computer network that allowed transmission of image was not to be underestimated. As for the lab scientists, it was the most surprising part of our experiment. Lab technicians quickly acquire a technical skill similar to that of the technicians who are present in the central hospital. In our experience, we have seen that the ability to perform a good frozen section is more a personal attitude than due only to experience. There are those who are more inclined to do so and those who are less inclined to do it. Those who are talented, therefore, really gave us a great hand. They were all very enthusiastic and they participated with great interest in this project. There was a routine work in the laboratory and it could have been a moment even so alternative to their daily life. The most serious problem they had to face was that of coordinating their activity in the analysis laboratory with our needs. This, as always, is the most difficult moment in which the technical coordinators had to connect with each other to be able to solve these problems. The technician alone with surgeons in the peripheral structure in the presence of several at the same time have difficulties, which does not happen in the central hospital as there are more technicians, more pathologists who can intervene and therefore this problem could be easily solved. Surgeons were initially very difficult to change their habits. The surgeon no longer knows where it is when removing the sample. Actually, they were just pseudo-problems and they did it very well. Obviously, the alternative was not to take frozen sections. Operations inevitably take longer. Then it was the pathologists who interpreted digital images and therefore many had a priori refusal to want to do it. They were used to the microscope and they were afraid to learn something new by doing it. 
There are technical network problems and all the hospitals need to be connected with optical fibres with a determined capacity and the images must be kept in mind. In 2014, we changed the system because that previously tended to crash often and we had to restart it and it was very unstable. It was a first experiment that the company that followed him did not want to deepen and therefore we found this scanner for a few slides. These are the three stations in the peripheral hospitals. The first is that of Bresanone that you have seen in the previous images, which is actually a small closet. This one in Merano seems to be the best situation. Brunico is certainly the situation from the best organisational point of view, and therefore it is a pre-operating room, the one where nurses usually come and go next to the one where the sick pass with all the cabinets dedicated to anatomic pathology. In addition to this, we acquired an instrumentation that allowed the standardisation of the staining. This was not so much because they could not do it by hand, as it is usually done for all frozen sections. It is a very quick colour. However, to make peripheral technicians safer with a validated system, with a clear procedure and with colouring solutions, to be replaced when it is necessary in a rhythmic manner and therefore with a good result. In addition, there is a system for freezing the pieces that we found very useful. In fact, the data section is oriented in an optimal way and the quality of frozen section is decidedly improved. For me, we had an advantage. This one, for example, it is a liver. And it is difficult to examine in and in reality we had excellent results but the problem of fat remained. This is a colon. Of course, the fat is a resection margin of one colour and the quality at the level of the mucosa is very good. Actually, with this system, the temperature of the piece that is examined may vary. This, for example, is fat tissue. Very difficult to examine on ex frozen sections. And these are the results. This is precisely the cutting of fat tissue. Therefore, they were very happy with the result obtained. The proof that we were happy with the result obtained. Results from this table since 2009. I became head physician in 2009, and from then onwards, colleagues and I have decided that we will no longer go to the suburbs to examine that we used to alternate before. The numbers we have done with mutual satisfaction have increased enormously because it took much less time. There is a decline over the years linked to the reduction in sentinel lymph nodes. It was in the beginning the bulk of the examinations we did, while in 2021 it is linked to COVID. Still with regard to sentinel lymph nodes, we were interested in not having false positives, and this never occurred. So we had a positive predictive value equal to 100%, and this was the thing that interested us most. While it was acceptable that a number of cases be operated on for axillary dissection later. Therefore, they had a negative predictive value of 88%, considering both micro and macro metastases. Considering only macro metastases, the thing that most interested us over the 95% that we considered acceptable, given that some cases this situation also happened in the central hospital, a sampling error of the lymph node, a small macro metastasis, could be an eventuality. As for the whole of frozen sections, we had a correct evaluation that was a little different depending on the location but always over 90% and therefore we considered an excellent result to validate our system. One of our specialists with the University of Verona dedicated herself to telepathology to validate this system. With the last study, we then compared the tests we did in the Borzen Hospital, so the hub situation, with the spoke offices.
In addition, the result was that we had good accuracy in Borzen Hospital. But comparable to that of the pathologies, so we moved on with the project. This result was presented at the European Congress in Amsterdam. Professor Brunelli published these data. In conclusion, we have validated our system and we continue to operate in this way. The final result is that telepathology was feasible and possible, attainable, useful and above all achievable and reliable. With the vision of my office in wintertime, I thank you for participating. Many thanks, Dr. Mazzolini, for your interesting presentation. Um, before I start with the questions, I'm curious. I would like to know how many of you uh, listener have already used the digital pathology in their department. You can write just me in our chat. Ma prima di cominciare con le domande, una mia curiosità. Vorrei sapere quante persone sono collegate adesso e sono in ascolto e utilizzano già la patologia digitale nei loro reparti. Potete semplicemente scrivere io nella chat per segnalare che l'avete già utilizzata. Uh, out to the questions. So to break the ice, I will start with a question myself. Uh, Guido, what was the surgeon's reception to your proposal to perform these examinations from remote, which I'm sure involved cooperation on their part? Uh, Guido, qual è stata l'accoglienza dei chirurghi alla vostra proposta eh, di effettuare da remoto questi esami che ovviamente avrà comportato una collaborazione da parte loro. So, may I answer in English? May I try in English? Uh, 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 obviously, uh, obviously, the sergeants uh, did some resistance at the beginning, but we, we, we trained them when we went to the, to the peripheric hospitals in doing himself uh, the sections of the pieces they take out from the body, and uh, and um, and we we we, we told him uh, we, we are no longer going to do uh, this part of the job, and they suddenly suddenly they were they were um, obligated to do this, and they did because the alternative was not to make any frozen sections, and they did it very well. Because of course the sergeants are able to cut the surgical margin, they are able to cut the sentinel node, they are able to take a piece from a node from the line, and so on. Can you uh, replicate in Italian, Guido? Allora, dicevo che uh, i, i chirurghi all'inizio avevano, avevano delle difficoltà a accettare questa cosa. Ma quando siamo andati da loro, gli abbiamo insegnato come fare i prelievi e, e poi gli abbiamo detto che noi non saremmo più andati e non siamo più andati a fare i prelievi. Quindi abbiamo fatto la telepatologia. A quel punto l'alternativa era o fare gli esami estemporanei o non farli. E loro hanno fatto quello che facevamo noi con i prelievi, con ottimi risultati, perché ovviamente i chirurghi sono in grado di tagliare un margine, sono in grado di tagliare un linfonodo sentinella, sono in grado di fare un prelievo su un nodulo. Um, now, while we are waiting for new questions, I will uh, um, propose a question we received this morning from Estonia. And the question was, uh, we work with digital pathology in Estonia. Were there any complications with scanning images? Any errors on the images in which the tissue was put together in a way that would interrupt diagnostics? Uh, in Italian, um, noi lavoriamo con la digital pathology in Estonia. Um, sono state complicazioni con um, la, la scannerizzazione delle immagini? Ci sono stati errori 
eh, dove le immagini si mettevano insieme in un modo che rendevano impossibile fare una diagnosi, Guido. So, uh, as it was clear in my, in my discussion before, in the first system, which was very weak, very unstable, we had some problems. And in the first 100 cases we did, we had 20 in which we had technical problems. In two of those 20, we, we were not able to end the frozen sections because of problem of connection. In the others, we started again and we could make it. Uh, as you remember probably from the picture, you, you saw the picture of the, of the image of the slide and there was a black one. In that black one picture was a wrong connection uh, with the periphery. We started again and we could uh, perform the frozen section. Devo ridirlo in italiano? Sì, qualche volta ci sono stati dei problemi, soprattutto col primo sistema che era molto meno stabile, molto debole, soprattutto con le connessioni e il software era molto delicato. E nei primi 100 casi abbiamo avuto 20 casi di errori tecnici e in due di questi non abbiamo potuto finire, concludere l'esame estemporaneo. Negli altri 18 eh, abbiamo ri, rifatto la connessione, riscannerizzato e abbiamo potuto vederlo. E infatti nell'immagine che io vi facevo vedere c'era la foto al congelatore con sopra un quadrato nero. Quel quadrato nero era la mancata connessione che si era verificata qualche minuto prima. Uh, ok, there was another question from this morning session. Um, have you tested out masks that are designed to aid diagnostics, artificial intelligence, etc.? So, uh, in Italian, hai, hai provato ad usare delle, delle interfacce che sono state eh, disegnate per aiutare la diagnostica, come ad esempio con l'uso dell'intelligenza artificiale? Uh, actually, not yet. I do believe in digital pathology. I do believe that artificial intelligence will help us in doing our job. I, I do believe that in the next years, uh, the digitalization will be the point, the key point of all pathologies, but we didn't yet. We did only this small experiment in uh, um, frozen section, which worked very well, and we did it in the last 20 years. Uh, but without aid of any um, intelligence uh, aid. Lo ripeto? <ride> allora, eh, noi non abbiamo usato intelligenza artificiale per il nostro esperimento sulla eh, telepatologia con le estemporanee. Io credo, il mio punto di vista è che la digitalizzazione sia assolutamente... Eh, in inglese ho detto il futuro dell'anatomia patologica, ma io penso che sia già il presente dell'anatomia patologica. Penso che nei prossimi anni tutti quanti andremo verso una forte digitalizzazione dei nostri reparti e penso che l'intelligenza artificiale possa aiutare molto. Possa aiutare molto. Questa è la mia posizione. Per ora io non ho avuto esperienza diretta con intelligenza artificiale. Okay, that is a further question from myself. Uh, the solution you proposed involves the acquisition of expensive instruments by the hospital and also the provision of adequate space. Uh, was it difficult to get the administration to approve this expenditure? In our experience, uh, not really, because uh, there was a political will to do in this way in order to um, make able the uh, peripheral hospital for doing the frozen sections. Therefore, they give us the money to do this. But I also think that the money we need for digitalization is not a cost, it's an investment for the future. Uh, it's not... Ripetiamo in, itali oh, ripetiamo in italiano. In italiano... Okay, in italiano eh... la domanda... No, io prima, perché non ho no. detto la domanda in italiano. La soluzione che hai proposto ehm, comportava eh, spese da parte dell'ospedale per gli strumenti e per il, i materiali e tutto quello che occorreva e, e lo spazio. 
è stato difficile ottenere l'approvazione la, da parte dell'amministrazione di queste spese? Nel mio caso specifico no, perché c'era la volontà politica di eh, permettere le estemporanee nella periferia e eh, forse non l'ho spiegato bene in inglese, farlo con le persone che si spostano avrebbe avuto notevoli costi, mentre questo investimento che è stato fatto nelle, nella telepatologia ha reso possibile realizzarlo con un costo ben preciso e ben standardizzato. Io penso che in assoluto la digital pathology non sia un costo, ma sia da vedere come un investimento. Ok. Se ci sono altre domande, vi invito to the next webinar to be held on Thursday, the, the 20th of January, at the same time as today. And the subject of this third webinar uh, are two different innovative practical laboratory procedures. One is about quality control in immunotochemistry, and the second one is uh, about bleaching, uh, a bleaching technique to improve the quality of the slides for melanoma assessment. Thank you for listening to us up to the end. Thank you, Guido, for this interesting discussion at the end of your presentation. Uh, we you. look forward to hosting you again to our next webinar. Have you something to say, Guido? No, 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 I have nothing to say, uh, but to thank you for the invitation. And I wait for the invitation for January. I will certainly participate as a listener. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Guido. It was a good experience for us as well, uh, working with you. Have a nice day. Thank you all. Bye. Goodbye.